filmy dress, corsage to match, a handsome swain, and a lovely lady. That's you as others see you at the junior prom. The lights are soft, the music sweet, and you are with your favorite person. Will you enjoy this special evening among your friends? Will you really have a good time? Or will you be a little uncertain about the right thing to do and the right time to do it? Nothing spoils a good time like uneasiness. It keeps you from looking your best and doing your best. Lucky are the young people who know their manners, for they have captured the knack of seeing themselves as others see them, and they have gained confidence and poise thereby. Now by manners, we do not mean affectation. Good manners are really very simple. They come from knowing and following a set of simple rules which help you enjoy yourself with people and help people enjoy themselves with you. It's as simple as that. Good manners, social graces, etiquette, call it what you will, are all based on consideration for others, being kind to the other fellow and the little things of life as well as the big things. Those who start to learn their manners early are fortunate youngsters. They may not think so at the time, but as they grow older, they realize that good manners can't be put on for special occasions only. And what better place to see yourself as others see you than in the school hall between classes? Good manners must be practiced as a part of everyday living until consideration for others becomes as much a part of you as your right arm or your two feet. If your manners aren't the everyday regular part of you, when special occasions do come up, you may be uncertain not show up to advantage. And sometimes your lack of assurance results in the embarrassment of doing the wrong thing. The school cafeteria is another place to see yourself as others see you. Don't hold up the line with conversation pieces. Move as the line moves, because most school cafeterias serve a lot of people who are hungry at the same time. Know what to eat as well as how to eat. While each lunch has a variety to fit the taste of the individual, a good lunch follows the pattern of what is known as an A lunch and includes about one-third of the protective foods you need during the day. It consists of at least two ounces of either lean meat, poultry, fish, cheese, or one egg eaten as a main dish or on buttered bread as a sandwich. Servings of two vegetables or fruit and at least a half pint of whole milk. Milk is really the foundation of every good diet and the favorite of smart young people at any time for real refreshment. Good food is best enjoyed in good company and good company is based on good manners. This applies wherever you are, whether it be the school cafeteria, the hamburger palace, a simple meal at home, or more formal dining. The rules are simple and are based on your hostess's consideration for you. Put your napkin in your lap quietly. Fancy flourishes are disturbing to those around you. No need to be uneasy about a long line of silverware. The first piece you use is placed on the outside, making it easy for you to pick up without spoiling the place setting. Automatically, the next piece you use is on the outside, making it easy to be sure of using the right piece for each course as it is served. Soup is eaten quietly from the side of the spoon. Good manners are based on common sense and are easy to acquire if you follow the simple rules. Salads are on your left and are eaten with a fork. And remember, the salad fork will be on the outside. The knife and fork are tools you want to know how to use properly. Cut only a bite or two at a time. Your food will not only taste better if it is eaten in small bites, but you will look better too. And it gives you time to add your bit to the pleasant conversation which should be a part of every meal. Use your knife for cutting instead of tearing. And of course, the sword swallower in the circus is the only person who may have a knife anywhere near his mouth. At the table, you will look better if you sit up, relaxed but straight. No elbows on the table, please. Your butter spreader is never used for cutting bread or opening rolls or biscuits, which are broken apart by hand, but is used for spreading butter on bread or rolls a bite at a time. As you can see, the array of silverware is getting smaller as the dinner progresses, 
After use, silverware should be placed flat on the plate or service dish, not on the tablecloth where it might stain or leave a spot. Take on your spoon only what you can eat in one bite. If something you want is too far for you to reach easily, ask your companion to pass it to you. This reduces the chance of upsetting things which can be so embarrassing. And speaking of upsetting things, a spoon left standing in a cup is a trap for the unwary. That's why etiquette rules that a spoon is placed flat in the saucer after use. Manners are just as important at informal occasions. The popular host or hostess greets guests at the door and knows how to introduce them. A boy always standing is presented to a girl. Knowing the right way to introduce people puts everyone at ease and avoids embarrassment. Boys usually stand when introduced and always shake hands. Girls may if they choose. Then there is the matter of older people or people distinguished in their field. Both boys and girls stand for introductions to them and stay standing until they are seated or leave. These are simple things, considerate things that make sense and will help you build an attractive personality. You might as well begin young, on your earliest special occasions, to learn the rules that will help you through senior high, college, and the rest of your life. Girls follow the head waiter or hostess, and the boys follow the girls. When there is no head waiter, the boy goes ahead to secure a table and seat his young lady. When there is no usher, the same is true in churches, theaters, sports events, and other public places. Part of the fun of special occasions, of course, is trying new things. But in scanning the main new young lady, keep in mind the possible state of your escort's pocketbook. This will avoid embarrassment now and in the years to come. At every age, it's still a man's world when it comes to giving the order. So you tell your escort and let him tell the waiter. As we said before, you might as well learn this in junior high and avoid embarrassment in the days ahead. It will probably continue to be a man's world when ordering for a long, long time. In spite of everything, accidents do happen. Apologize if in a home, offer to repair the damage, and then drop the subject. When dining out, the waiter will take care of it. Repairs to your makeup and hairdo should be made in the powder room, never at the table in public. Going places and doing things requires budgeting of time, and it is much more pleasant if you call on time and are ready when called for. If your parents do not know the man of the hour, then introductions are of course in order. A few pleasant words before setting out will put you both at ease and make things more gracious. After all, parents are people, and they have a genuine interest in you. One of the young lady's parents, or a mature family friend, should be present whenever she leaves on a date. And take good care of her. And this means not only big things like driving safely and getting her home at the reasonable hour set, but also little things like opening doors and many other small courtesies that are a lady's due. The same principle and consideration for the young lady applies if you are going on the bus to the library or out on a very special occasion. Whether it be punch from a crystal bowl or hot dogs at a hayride, the gentleman is responsible for getting refreshments. And it is the young lady's responsibility to be gracious in all her actions, to help in keeping up conversation so that everyone is at ease. When she goes to the cloakroom, don't tarry with a stag line. Be nearby to escort her when she comes out. Carry your manners with you at all times. Make them part of you. They will help you over the hard places. And remember, whatever your goals in life, finding a good job, being a gracious host or hostess, or not being a wallflower at college parties, good manners will help you achieve them faster and more successfully. It was Emerson who said, manners are the happy ways of doing things. And Emerson was right. Be natural. Be yourself. But see yourself as others see you.